Hi, you guys. Welcome to our live crochet event. My name is Brenda KB Anderson, and I'm going to be your instructor for this really fun hour of making this super cute amigurumi. So this is a little hot chocolate with removable marshmallows. Um, and we have, actually, we've got a shorter marshmallow and a taller marshmallow, because this little short marshmallow is kind of melting in the top of the hot chocolate. Um, but you can, of course, make the marshmallows however tall you want to, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that um, as we work through this project. I am very excited to teach this today, you guys, because Making toys, making amigurumi is my absolute favorite thing to make in crochet, in knitting. I love sewing toys. Um, my background, I actually come from more of a sewing background and I worked on character costumes for more than 20 years. So I have like this um, aesthetic for cute things. I just really, really love making cute things. And I'm excited that you guys are here and you want to learn how to make some cute stuff with me today. All right, so of course, this is a live event. I'm glad that you guys are here. I love it when you guys are active and say hi in the chat, or you can tell me things like, um, I didn't understand that part. Can you back up or explain this? Or if you have any other questions or comments or useful tips for beginners who are working on amigurumi for the first time, um, or people who are completely new to crochet, because I know that there's going to be some brand new crocheters here today as well. Um, if you have any tips, you can go ahead and put those in the chat, and I'll try to be um, responding to you and answering as many questions as I can. Um, hopefully all of them during this live event. And um, yeah, so you guys, I'm so excited. There's a lot of you here. This is awesome. So I want to say hi to Jan and hi to Christy and, and good morning, Mary from Texas and Becky, who's in Missouri. Hi, you guys. Thanks so much for joining. All right. So um, maybe you guys have already downloaded this, but there is a free pattern in the description. Um, also, uh, um, it's free to everybody and you can go ahead and download it and then you can follow along. If you are brand new to crocheting or a brand new to reading patterns, um, even if you're thinking, ugh, I don't know how to read a pattern, I'll be talking you through the stickier parts of it. Um, but just know in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a live event that's all about reading crochet patterns. So if as you're reading it, if you need find that you need extra help with reading patterns, um, Hopefully I will have answered everything in this live event because I want this to be good for total beginners. But you know, maybe you're going to be working on some other patterns after this, then please come to that live event too because that I'm going to be kind of clearing up some common questions that people have when they're reading through patterns. But having said all that, you don't really need to know how to read these patterns. You can watch what I'm doing and follow along um, and I'll be giving you all the information. It just really helps to have like the stitch count so you can go through and check to make sure that you're on track as you're working through it. You'll have a list of materials. I put a bunch of links in there for the things that I'm using. Um, so it, it is just helpful to have that anyway, even if you are a little wary about working from some written directions. But I'll be just, you know, explaining everything as we go so you guys um, won't get lost. But definitely ask questions, you know, if, if there's anything that you feel like I've missed or if you need me to go over something again. Alrighty, so um, in the pattern, there is, uh, I, I actually put in a link for the beginner crochet kit that I bought and designed this project around. So I bought this crochet kit on Amazon and I thought, oh, maybe I should design something um, that uses the materials in the crochet kit because that way, if you were like a total beginner and you didn't really know like where to get your materials or how, like, how to know what yarn to use or what hook to use or whatever it was, um, then you could just buy this kit. So all you really need are the, the pieces from this kit and I'll be going through this, you know, what everything is in a minute. Um, so this is the kit right here. And then you, in addition to that, you're going to need some fiber fill stuffing. So this is just like a synthetic fluffy stuff that we're going to use to stuff our, uh, the mug and the marshmallows as we work on our project. So um, if you are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to buy a kit. I have a ton of yarn at home. Can I just use something I have? And absolutely. That's one thing that I really love about Amigurumi is that you can use pretty much any yarn. I mean, you can use thin yarns and make a tiny little Amigurumi. You can use bulky yarns and make a, a bigger version of it. You know, so that it's going to affect your size if you change, you know, the thickness of the yarn from what I'm using here. But that's fine. It's still going to be cute. 
Um, so just think about that. If you're using like a much thicker yarn, you probably want to size up the eyes comparatively um, so that it looks good with, you know, in proportion to everything else. Just, just something to keep in mind. All right, so what I'm going to be using is these three different colors. I've got a dark brown, a yellow, and a white. Um, and so the yellow is for the mug, the white's for the marshmallows, and the dark brown is for the chocolate inside the mug, which, let me show you, is right inside there. So see, we have like a little rim of the, the mug so, so our marshmallows can sit down in there. Ta-da! <coughs> um, so I'll be using this yarn, and at the most, um, the yellow yarn uses the most, and that's 80 yards. Everything else is about 20 yar yards that you'll need. Um, and this is like a chunky weight, maybe just a little thinner than a chunky, but a little thicker than a worsted weight, in my opinion. It didn't have a weight on the yarn label, um, but I kind of checked it out and compared it to some other yarns, and that's, I think it's about a four or a five. And I'm going to be using a four millimeter crochet hook. Um, that is also known as a G hook. Uh, and, but, and that's what comes with the set. This hook came with the set, so I'm going to be using the one that came with it. Um, but if you already have your own hooks, you know, just use whatever hook that you need to in order to crochet up a piece that isn't going to have holes between your stitches. You want a fairly firm fabric. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here's a little sample here. You can see it's pretty stiff. It doesn't just flop around. Um, so you need it to be able to kind of be a little more structured. It just looks better. And you don't, I mean, yes, if you hold this up to something white behind it, you can see those little holes. But for the most part, when you're looking at it on, you know, if something is dark behind it, you can't see spaces between your stitches. Because if you do already see spaces between your stitches, when you stuff it, those spaces are going to get even bigger and you're going to just see stuffing coming out from between your stitches and it's not going to look as nice as it should. It's going to be a little distracting. All right, so, um, so we've got the yarn. And, and one note about this yarn, the reason that I chose this specific kit is because this yarn is made specifically for beginners. It is, the structure is like a knitted tube and there's like a little bit of um, like a fluffy cord on the inside to kind of give it plumpness. And the thing I really, really love about this is that it's smooth and you can see your stitches really well and your hook is not gonna be able to split your yarn. So that's, that's kind of the bonus of this type of yarn. But you can definitely use like, you know, where's a weight acrylic, you know, from a big box store, you know, whatever you have laying around that's in colors that you um, think would look good. Of course, your mug does not need to be <laughs> yellow <laughs> like mine. You can pick whatever color you want. And I'm gonna show you what's in the little bag of goodies that comes in the, in the kit. So it comes with a tapestry needle. So the tapestry needle is plastic, um, which will work fine for this project. But if you're looking to um, buy some supplies for the future, think about getting a metal tapestry needle because it really makes it a lot easier. It slips through your yarn better and it goes through your dense stitches a little bit better than plastic. So I prefer that. But this works just fine. It comes with the kit. Um, and then it comes with these three locking stitch markers, and you'll see me using these in this demonstration, but basically it's just a way, you slip this through your stitch and then you can close it, and it's just a way to keep track of stuff, keep track of where you're at, keep track of certain stitches. Um, people also use them for kind of pinning their pieces together. Instead of using straight pins or a safety pin, you can use these. Um, so those are nice to have. And then we also have three sets of safety eyes. So the, each set of safety eyes, it's, there's two in a set, and then the, each pair of the, um, you know, the black eyes comes with a little backing. So we put that on the back, on the inside of the project, and that's what keeps the eye in place. And you might be thinking, oh, safety eyes, that's cool, then I can give them to a child and they'll stay in. But <laughs> the problem with safety eyes is they can be chewed off, they can come off of their backing if they're not put on absolutely, you know, it just depends on the eye. They're just not safe enough um, for those that are younger than three years old. So don't use safety eyes. If you're making this for a, a baby or something, um, you'll need to use embroidery. <clears throat> and I would not recommend making these tiny little toys for a small child either, just because it's, it's, they're probably a little too large to be a choking hazard, but it just makes me a little nervous because they're, they're pretty small. The cup definitely would work, though. All right. 
Okay, so let's, let me just check in here and then we're gonna get started. We've got a couple questions already. Let's see here. And a couple more hellos, oh my goodness. Okay, Karen saying good morning from Pittsburgh. Hi Karen. And Jennifer from Pennsylvania, hello. And Cynthia from San Jose, oh my goodness. <coughs> oh, and Karen's excited about this project to get today. She's a beginner. Well, welcome. Yes, I wanted to make one a video especially for beginners because I know beginners, you know, there, you've, there probably have been times when you've thought, oh, I really want to make that, but I just don't know where to start. Um, and BB, hi from Canada, hi. Kareen saying hello from Raleigh, North Carolina. And Dawn is here from Republic of Washington. Hello, welcome. And Creative One is saying hello to everybody. Hi. Lots of hellos. Margaret and, and Sandra. Um, she's looking for a great, uh, she's getting ready for a great day of crocheting. <laughs> well, it's rainy there. And Kayla's saying good morning from Minnesota. Hey, I'm in Minnesota too. All right, Belinda has a question. She's wondering, because she's left-handed and she wants to know if this will be difficult. So Belinda, I would highly recommend flipping your screen so that you can watch it um, like a mirror image of what I'm gonna be doing because then it will look like I'm left-handed and I will cr be crocheting just like you. And if you don't know how to do that, um, or you just wanna, if you have a mirror nearby, you can watch in the mirror, you know, look in the mirror at the screen and then that will look left-handed as well. So. Um, that's what I always recommend to left-handed people because it can be hard to learn these, you know, a brand new skill like this where it's not a necessarily a symmetrical stitch that we're making um, it can be a little bit confusing if you can't see it done the way that a left-handed person would do it. I know left-handed people are used to doing that kind of stuff though. It kind of blows my mind how easy you guys are able to flip things in your brains, but I would definitely recommend just um, flipping your screen. Um, let's see. Oh, and Margaret's saying hello from a beach. Hello. <laughs> uh, hello from St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Hello. And okay. All right. So let's get started. So I know this is going to seem very strange, um, but I'm going to be making pur a purple marshmallow today. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think sometimes white is a little bit hard to see um, on a monitor. It just is a little bit hard to see your stitches. So I'll be going back and forth. Um, the colors won't always make sense, but I'll try and clarify as I'm going like this is this color in my project and showing you what, what piece it is so that it hopefully won't be confusing. All right, so we're gonna get started by making the marshmallow. Um, so in your pattern, there's a lot of information at the beginning. It's telling you, you know, what you need to order or, you know, purchase at the store, all the specific pieces that you need. Um, there's some extra links in case the, in case you're looking for this kit and it sells out. I'm not sure. Last I looked, there were a f at least a few left. Um, but in case it sell, sells out, I just had some more links, so at least you could see what the yarn looks like that I'm using. Um, you can, of course, source your own materials, no problem. Um, and I have a little thing talking about gauge. For this project, you really don't need to worry about it. Like I said, you just need to crochet something up with a hook that will give you stitches that are small enough so that you can't see holes between your stitches. So. Um, if you are getting large holes between your stitches, you're gonna to wanna to go down a smaller hook size. Normally, when we are first learning how to crochet, most people crochet tighter when they're first learning because it's a little bit like, you're trying to figure out how to hold things. I mean, that is like literally, in my opinion, 90% of learning how to crochet is just learning how to hold things. Because um, it, it, that is the trickiest part. Once you kind of get used to the feel of it, then learning you know, where exactly to put your hook, how many, yarn overs, meaning like how many times you wrap the yarn around the hook, things like that. That's all just like icing on the cake later, it's easy. Um, but working on, you know, just holding on to things is the trickiest part. So if you've never crocheted before, don't give up. It just takes some practice and some kind of trying different like ways of holding the hook and different ways of holding the yarn. Um, that's kind of the main thing when you're first learning how to, how to crochet. Okay, and then there's some notes, um, but I'll be going through all that. Underneath that, there's a section that says stitches used, and so I'm explaining how to do all the stitches that are in this pattern. So I, I'm telling you all the instructions, but I'm gonna be showing you all that, so you don't need to worry about that. And there is a section in your pattern that has um, 
Let me see. Maybe I passed it already. There is a section that tells you, here it is, in the orange box, that decodes all of the little abbreviations that are throughout the pattern. So if you're reading it and you're like, what's a boop? What's a ch? I don't understand this crazy crochet language. Um, so you can come over here and decode what all those things mean. But I'm going to be showing you, like I said, how to do it. So you, you don't need to worry. I just wanted to point that out in case you're trying to read the pattern later and you're like, this makes no sense. I don't know what all these um, abbreviations are. OK, so we're going to start under the instructions. We're going to start working on the tall marshmallow. And we're going to begin. Um, you would be using your white yarn, of course. And we're going to begin with something that's called an adjustable loop. It's also called a magic ring, an adjustable ring. There's lots and lots of different um, terms or different names for this particular um, uh, term that we're going to be using here. So the first thing we do is we just draw a little, like a little cursive E or just a little loop here. So this end is just the, you know, the end of our yarn, and this side is connected to the ball of the yarn. Okay, so then you take this loop and you flip it over onto this piece right here. So I'm going to put my finger there, flip it over like that. So now we have, it looks like a little circle with a line through it. So we're going to put our crochet hook underneath that line in the middle, like this. So it's just underneath that strand. Then we're going to take the strand that's connected to the ball of yarn, and you can see I'm resting my finger right here so that doesn't slide all over. And we're going to take the strand that's connected to the ball and we're going to wrap it around the back and over the top of our hook. Then we're going to pull that loop through the loop on our hook. So this is the part where if you've never crocheted before, it's going to feel really awkward and you're probably going to have to try this a couple different times. Um, you can put your hands exactly how you see mine with a thumb here and your finger can be here to help those loops or some people like to hold their crochet hook like this. So you can try that. Basically, there's no wrong way to do this. If you are able to make the stitches and it's not injuring your body, you know, with repetitive motions, then you're doing it the right way. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap this around the back of our hook and you can see here I'm holding my yarn the one that's connected to the ball, I thread it over my ring finger, under my middle finger, and over this finger. And I do that because I can put some tension on the yarn, so this is nice and taut, and then I can wrap my hook around it easier. And then I, you know, I can spread my fingers out and let it slip through. So that's something to try, but the, a lot of people do, um, they wrap the yarn around a finger like this to give themselves some tension. There's like a million ways to do it, so don't just um, feel like you have to do it my way. My way, you definitely do not. All right, so let's start from the beginning just because that was just a lot of talking there. Okay, so we're gonna make our loop. We're gonna take our loop, flip it over onto that strand. We're gonna place our hook underneath that center strand. And then we are going to wrap the one, the strand connected to the ball around the back of our hook. And I'm putting a little tension here. I'm pushing my hook here and I'm going to turn the nose of my hook down so I can slide it through that stitch right there. So this is a chain. We're just pulling one strand through one strand, and that just anchors everything to this adjustable loop. Then I'm going to take my loop, and I'm going to flip it like this, just a half a turn, like this. And now I'm going to start working into my loop. And I did that because then I can work over a double strand right here, and that makes it a little bit more um, just a little bit more substantial. It's not going to slip and, and um, the hole isn't going to come back as easily. There are lots of different ways to make this adjustable loop, adjustable ring. Um, it's called so many different things and there's lots and lots of different ways to do it. So if you don't like the way that I do it, definitely look for a different way to do it. There's lots of different ways to start. Okay, so now we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to be working stitches into the center of the circle here. So we're going to insert our hook in, and then we're going to yarn over. So that means the yarn is coming around like this, okay? We're not wrapping it this way in this project. That is something you could do, but we're going like this, and then we're going to bring that loop through that circle, and then we're going to yarn over again the same direction, and then we're going to pull through two loops, the two loops that are on our hook, and that is the first single crochet. I'm going to put a stitch marker in that stitch, 
Um, even though it is, it is easy for me to see that stitch later, I've been crocheting for a long time, and if you're brand new, I would recommend putting a stitch marker right in the top of that stitch. So the top of the stitch, if you look at this edge here, it's just like a little V, it looks like this. So you'll be putting your stitch marker underneath there. And that's gonna tell you where the very first stitch is. Now we're gonna do five more single crochets. So we're gonna insert our hook into the loop. We're gonna yarn over, we're gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. That's the second one. Do that again, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And if this seems a little unwieldy, try making your loop just a little smaller. You do, just want it big enough so that you can crochet in there, but it, if it's a little smaller, it's a little easier to hold on to. All right, so we've got three stitches. We're gonna add three more. So this is exactly the same way. One, two, and three. Okay, and now we're gonna just hang on in the middle here and we're gonna pull on our yarn tail and then we're gonna watch that little loop just close in and become nothing. So the reason we call it an adjustable loop is because it starts out large and you can put a bunch of stitches in it and then you just pull on that edge there and it makes it nice and tight. So now we're gonna start round two. So round two is gonna start where we marked that stitch. Okay, so there's that first V and we're going to place our hook underneath both strands of that V to make the next single crochet. So we'll insert our hook here, yarn over, pull up a loop. There's two loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through two. So that's the first stitch of round two. And then we're gonna do another stitch in that same spot. So if you're like, where is that spot? When you look at the front of your stitch, you'll see a little V on the front. You also see that V on the top of your stitch, which is right here. Here, let me get something to point with. So here's the top of your stitch, and here is the front of the stitch you just made, right there, that little V. So that V is pointing right there. That is the same stitch that we already worked into. So we're gonna place our hook in that same spot. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So now we have two stitches that went into that first stitch, and we're gonna keep doing that all the way around. So here's the next stitch. You can look, there's that little V on the top. So we're gonna put our hook underneath that, and we're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And then we'll do that again, same spot. So there's two stitches. Here's two more stitches in the next stitch. Two more stitches in the next stitch. I know I'm going a little faster now, but um, you guys can certainly go back and watch me doing that a little bit slower. You can always go back and watch this later. It will be available to watch um, after this live event. So, All right, so now we have a total of 12 stitches, and you can count those up by just looking at all the little Vs along the edge. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And we don't count this last loop here because that just hangs out on our hook. All right, so that's round two. And then we've got the next round, we're gonna place two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet into the following stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that around. And let me show you what this looks like on our pattern. So if you're new to reading patterns, maybe you're brand new, um, round one is just telling you to make those six single crochets into the loop and pull on that beginning tail. And then at the end, it'll say six single crochets. That's what SC stands for, single crochets. The reason it's telling you this little number at the end is that's like a checkpoint where you can be like, oh, okay, I'll count up my stitches and make sure I have the same amount. Anytime the stitch count changes, it will be listed here after your instructions. So round two, two single crochets into each stitch around, you have a total of 12 single crochets. So we had six, we put two in each stitch, we end up with double of six, which is 12. Round three, which is what we're about to do, it says in brackets right here, it says two single crochets in the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, 
and then it says six times. So what this is telling you is everything that's within the brackets, you're going to work this, and then you're work you're going to work this six times around. So you'll repeat whatever's in the brackets, however many times it says after the brackets, and here's your total stitch count. So 18 single crochet at the end of round three. All right, so we're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. So one and two. And we'll place our stitch marker in the first of those two. And then we're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch. We're going to do two single crochets into the following stitch because we're repeating those, those instructions again. And then one single crochet into the following stitch. One, two in the next stitch and then one in the following stitch. One, two in the next stitch, and one in the following stitch. <coughs> one, two in the next stitch, and then one in the following stitch. One, two in the next stitch, and then one in the following stitch. So here we have 18 stitches. We can count them all up. That we've got 18 stitches around. I'm going to remove this and we're going to work. Oh, actually, before we work round four, I instruct you to weave in the beginning yarn tail, which to those of you who um, have made amigurumi before, maybe you're not used to weaving in your tails because they're on the inside of your work, but I always do it because I don't want that hole to open up later. So to weave in your tails, you just thread your yarn onto your yarn tail, and then you're going to run it through uh, some of the loops on the back side of your fabric. You don't want to, you don't want to your your um, needle to come through on the front. Okay, so just keep it to the back and go in a couple of different directions. It's okay, you know, this doesn't have to be super elaborate. This yarn is actually fairly sticky, considering um, that it's mostly cotton. So um, it does, I feel like it does tend to stay in place pretty well, but I don't really, <laughs> I never really trust those beginning yarn tails to stay there over time. All right, so then we're just going to cut that off. And now we're going to continue with round four. We are going to single crochet back loop into each stitch around. So what that means is it's the same stitch, the single crochet is the same stitch, but instead of going underneath both loops here, we're going to go underneath just the back loop. So there's that little V on top, that's the top of our stitch. We are not going under this one, we are going to go underneath this one here, just the back loop. And the reason we're doing that is because we are making the top of our marshmallow and then right now we're going to start going down the side so we're making this kind of right angle and it just makes it a little bit more crisp if we do that um, stitching it just in that back loop oh and sea wolf pack is here good morning cindy i'm glad you're here yay um, and pamela is saying good morning from michigan awesome i'm going to michigan soon all right okay here we go so now we're going to be working underneath that back loop so like I said, underneath just the back loop, and we're going to be making single crochet stitches, which you, we've already been making. So you just insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And this time, in this round, we're, not making, we're only making one stitch into each stitch around. So there's our next stitch. There's the back loop. We're going to insert our hook there and make a single crochet. And we're just going to continue that all the way around. So until we have our 18 stitches, all of them worked into that back loop. And you can see it's starting to kind of cup a little bit. It doesn't want to stay like a flat circle anymore. And the reason is because we're only doing one stitch per stitch. So um, we are no longer increasing. Increasing is when you are making more than one stitch in a stitch so that you're actually adding stitches in that round um, to make your piece bigger or to shape it differently. Um, and now we're just working what we call working even, which is just working one stitch per stitch. Or, you know, you're not increasing, you're maintaining the stitch count. 
All right, we've got two more stitches here. There we are. So you can see it wants to kind of bend there, make that nice corner. So here we've made it around to our stitch marker. We're gonna remove that for a minute, and then we are going to work underneath both stitches. We're back to making normal single crochets, and we're going to work rounds, let's see, how many rounds are we doing for this one? Up, up to round nine, so what that means is, so we just worked round number four, Round number four is just above that kind of line that all those unused loops make. So this is round four. So now we are working round five. So we're just doing one single crochet into each stitch around like this. And we're just gonna keep continuing around and around and around. We're gonna go up through round nine and let me show you <coughs> what that looks like. Here's our little purple marshmallow a little farther along. So that's after we would work round nine. So this was round four, remember? So the round four was, was worked and left that um, unused loop right there. So this is round four, round five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's how you would count your rows. You can see those little Vs. They're kind of like little bumps. You can see these little ridges between each round. So that, that's how you know how many um, rounds you've done. You can also keep track, but uh, it's hard to keep track sometimes when you're going around and around. Okay, so at this point, this is where you can put your safety eyes in place, and we are going to be using the mid-size safety eyes. Let's see here. So th these, uh, the little package came with three different sizes. Here's the mid-size ones. They're very close. I think they're six millimeter. Um, we have six millimeter, five millimeter, and I think these are maybe eight for the largest. The largest ones are gonna go in that mug, so we're gonna, we wanna make sure we don't use the little bitty ones for this. So I'll put those back in there. <coughs> and it, I tell you in the pattern exactly where to put these. So we're go I'm looking for a place where we have that little jog when we're doing that spiral. See how these lines don't exactly match? That's gonna be the back of my marshmallow. And we're gonna place these between, let's see, round six and seven with three stitches between them, which means that there's two holes visible between the eyes. So here was round four, five, and here's round six and round seven. So let's place one here. And then we're gonna have one, two spaces between, see these little holes, we're leaving two spaces, and then we're gonna put our next eye in there. And you can just kind of check the placement, see if it looks like the picture or, if you don't, if you want to make it different than mine, that's totally fine. You can put them closer together or further apart. And then you're going to put the little um, backings on the back of them. So these, the little raised edge, the little raised donut that sticks out, that is going to be visible when I put this on. So I'm putting the flatter side close to the, the fabric and um, just pushing them on until you're piece stays in place. And these eyes, they're, they're decent, they're pretty good. Um, they'll be just fine for this project, but normally I order my, all of my safety eyes from a company called Glass Eyes Online. <laughs> and they're not glass, they're I mean the ones I order are plastic, um, but they make the best safety eyes in my opinion, so that's usually where I get them from. Um, okay, so we've got our eyes in place, and we have to do that before we keep going because you need to be able to access the inside of your marshmallow um, to put the backings on. All right, so the next round, we're going to be working into that back loop again. So remember our friend, the back loop? We're going to do a single crochet two together. So what that means is we're gonna insert our hook underneath the back loop, yarn over, bring up a loop, then we're gonna do that in the next stitch. Insert, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So we're reducing our stitch count in half because we're starting out with two stitches and ending up with one stitch. Now we're gonna continue that around. Single crochet two together, working just through that back loop, back loop only. And at some point, it's this hole here is gonna get kind of small. So if you have smaller, hands, you might be able to go a little bit longer here before you stuff it, but you may want to just start 
um, you know, halfway around or so putting the stuffing in to your marshmallow, um, if that makes it easier. So I'm gonna go just a little further, making those single crochet two togethers. And I'm gonna pull the, on this loop a little bit just so that we don't lose it. You could put a stitch marker in it too if you're worried about it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my fiber fill to stuff my marshmallow. And so when you're stuffing something, you want it to be fairly firm um, because it will get packed down a little bit over time. But you just wanna make sure that you are not stuffing it so firmly that it's stretching out your, your fabric a lot and then you start seeing holes between your stitches. All right, that seems pretty good. And then we'll continue making those single crochet two togethers through the back loop. So we'll pick up a loop there, pick up a loop there, and single crochet them together. So we should end up with nine stitches at the end here. Oh, I just realized I made a mistake, you guys. Okay, um, I'm decreasing too quickly, I'm sorry. I don't know if anybody was following that. <laughs> but I'm supposed to do a single crochet two together and then one stitch into the next stitch. All of it working through that back loop. I'm sorry, you guys, I didn't, I should have been paying more attention. But, so here's my first decrease, and then my next stitch, I just do one stitch into that stitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna repeat that. Here's my decrease. The decrease is the same as a single crochet two together, working through the back loop. Again, working through the back loop, we're making a single crochet here. I'm sorry, you guys, I hope I didn't mess anybody up. <laughs> All right, but that's good practice in um, tearing out your project, right? You just pull on the end and it'll undo. And the cool thing about this yarn also is that it really comes apart very, very well. It doesn't get all fuzzy. It doesn't seem to get any weaker. Um, so it's a good one for when you're first learning how to, how to crochet because, you know, usually when you're learning how to crochet, you gotta rip stuff out sometimes. All right, here we go. We are almost all the way around. Let me count up my stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Somehow I ended up with one extra stitch. I'm not sure how I did that, but I'm going to make an extra decrease right here. And then I'll end up with the right amount of stitches. I think I just forgot one of the um, single crochets. But it's fine. You won't even be able to tell. Okay, so now. Um, we are going to be working invisible decreases around here. Now you could do the same kind of decrease, which is the single crochet two together. This time we're going to be working underneath both strands of the stitch, okay? So underneath here and then underneath here to decrease these two stitches together. Um, so I, but I wanted to teach you the invisible decrease, which is the way that I do it is I go underneath that front loop, just the front loop, and then I go underneath both loops of the next stitch. So I do that before I do a yarn over. Then I make my yarn over, pull through that stitch, pull through this stitch, and then I finish my single crochet like normal, like that. And that makes your decrease a little bit less noticeable. It's not quite as bumpy. So we go under the front loop, then under both loops of the next stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through, and then yarn over and pull through two. All right, so we're gonna do that a couple more times here. Under the front loop, under both loops. Bring your yarn through, bring it through that stitch, yarn over and pull through two. So if this is tricky, you can certainly do the same single crochet two together we were just doing. Also, oftentimes people will go underneath the front loop of the next stitch and they'll go uh, only underneath the front loop of the following stitch and that does make it a little easier to pull through and then finish off your single crochet. So that is another option as well here. So underneath the front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through those two stitches, yarn over and pull through two. And now I think we've got six stitches left here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. All right, so then we're gonna cut off our yarn here and we're just gonna pull that 
stitch all the way through, pull the loop all the way through, and then we are going to finish up by closing that hole. So we will go underneath the front loop of each stitch around like this. I'm just going, threading my needle underneath just the front loop because that makes it a little bit easier to tighten it. Um, you can go under both loops if you're making a hat or something like that. Um, or if you feel like it's a little more sturdy for the yarn you're working with, you can certainly go under both. But it's easier just to get it underneath that front loop. Now we're going to pull on that to tighten up that little hole. And our hole has been tightened. So then we can go ahead and I like to take a couple little stitches all the way through my marshmallow because right now my marshmallow is getting a little kind of pointier top to the head. And so I will take my needle and run it through my whole marshmallow. Let's see if I can find a little spot. I kind of have to twist it a little sometimes to get it through because especially because I chose this very sticky um, stuffing. Stuffing comes in it can be very sticky or it can be very silky and smooth. So that's just the kind of thing you kind of need to experiment and see what you like. I feel like the sticky stuffing, it doesn't come through when you, um, when you stitch into your, your piece. It won't come popping through as much as the silky stuff does. But it is a little bit harder sometimes if you have a really dense area, like right now. <laughs> it's hard for me to get this through into the right spot. There we go. So if you take one little stitch through the whole thing, you can really bring those two ends closer to each other and then they'll be nice and flat. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends. So I'll weave mine in and try to catch some of those strands instead of like on the backs of your stitches, instead of just sort of poking it into your marshmallow um, because that will keep it from unraveling. All right, there we go. This would be a little bit easier too if I had a metal tapestry needle. I would have been able to slide it through much easier, I think. All right, so there's my little purple marshmallow. And now we're gonna move on to the mug. So the mug begins in the same way as the marshmallow. In fact, the first three rounds of the, the mug, which actually we're starting with the chocolate, we're gonna be starting in the center here. Um, and then we are going to be working around and then we're going to start working on the mug itself. We'll go up to the edge and we'll come down here and then we'll close it in at the bottom. So um, instead of working in that very dark brown color, I thought I would just grab a brighter color like this green. So just imagine this is chocolate. <laughs> we're making a very bright green tea here. We've got lots more hellos, you guys. Oh, you guys, I'm so glad you all are here and saying hi. There's so many of you. <laughs> OK. And Cindy is always giving me such good encouragement. She's saying she's glad she's not the only person who makes mistakes and has to frog it. Yep, I do that daily. So you're not alone. OK. Um, all right, so what I have here, are these are the first three rounds of exactly the same thing as when we made the marshmallow. So I'm not going to show that again, but it starts out exactly the same. So if you want to go back to the video later on um, when you're watching this, you can work those first three rounds of the marshmallow. It, um, that's going to be your hot chocolate. It's exactly the same. And then we are going to continue on with round four of our hot chocolate. And here we have those brackets again. So we're going to do single crochet in each of the next two stitches, then two single crochets into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat what's in those brackets six times. So we'll do single crochet, single crochet. Let me place a marker here. Put that in the first of those single crochets. All right, single crochet, single crochet. And then we're going to do two single crochets into the next stitch. So here we are working underneath both loops, just like we have been at the very beginning of that marshmallow. So single crochet, single crochet. Now we're doing two single crochets into the next stitch. Okay, one in this stitch, one in the next stitch, and two in the following stitch. One and two one in the next stitch, one in the next stitch, and let me see here, and two in the following stitch, one and two. One in the next stitch, 
one in the next stitch, and two in the following stitch, one and two. One in the next stitch, one in the next stitch, and two into the following stitch, one and two. Okay, so the next round we're gonna do a single crochet into the next stitch, two single crochets into the next stitch, and then a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So we have one. So I'm, I'm just gonna say increase for those stitches where we are doing two stitches in one. So we did one single crochet. Now we're gonna do an increase, one, two, and then we're gonna do two more stitches, each into their own stitch. So one stitch, an increase, and then one into each of the next two. One into the next stitch, increase, and then one into the next two. One and two. One into the next stitch, increase, and then one into each of the next two. One, increase, one into each of the next two. We'll do that one more time. One, increase, and then one into each of the next two. Okay, so on the following round, which is round six, this is the last round of the chocolate part. Remember, this is brown. <laughs> Our green is brown. We're gonna do a single crochet into two stitches, one and two, two single crochets into the following stitch, one and two. Then we're gonna do a s one single crochet into the next stitch, and then two into the following stitch, one and two. Now we're gonna repeat that section six times. So we, we have two increases within that one repeat. So it goes like this. We do single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, and then repeat. Single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. And we should be halfway around here. Let's do that again. Single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, and then increase. Single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. All right, one more repeat. Single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, and then an increase. And that was our last stitch of the chocolate. So then we just cut our yarn, <coughs> pull that through, take that out, and then we are going to weave in our tails. So this one, I, d I could have done a slip stitch to fasten off. For those of you who have crocheted before, you know what that is. Um, or I'm just going to take this and skip the next stitch, go under the following stitch here, like that. Then I'm going to find where my yarn tail came from, which is right there, and I'm gonna push it back down through there. And that's called an invisible join. It makes the edge very smooth and it'll be really easy to crochet into. You don't have to do it this way, um, but I just find that it makes a, a very nice edge and it's just a ni nice little easy trick to show you guys. Okay, so then you, would, you could weave in your ends um, just to get them out of the way and trim them off. I'm just gonna get them out of my way here. And then we are going to begin by working the mug color. So then we would take the yellow. I'm going to be just using this purple here. And we're going to make a slip knot and place it on our hook. So in order to do that, we draw this little loop, flip it over. This is just like how we were making that adjustable loop. We're going to place our hook underneath it. And then we're going to grab those two ends. <coughs> and that makes the slip knot. 
but you can make your slip knot however you like. Um, that's just how I do mine. And then we are going to start working around the edge of this. We're going to work on underneath the front loop of each stitch around. So that's right here. We're not going to be working under both. We're just going to be working underneath the front loop. So we're going to start by just making a single crochet. This is called a standing single crochet because we started with a slip knot on our hook. And we're just going to insert a hook underneath any of the stitches here. Doesn't matter which one. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. There's our first single crochet. And now we're going to continue working underneath that front loop, one single crochet into each stitch around. So for those of you who are total beginners, this might all seem kind of overwhelming and I know I'm going quickly here now because I'm, I'm trying to make sure I have time to show you guys all the steps. Um, but you can always go back and watch things and you can slow things down and watch them too. Watch them over and over until it makes sense and that way when you're working on your project you can always pause it and go back and watch all these little pieces. Um, I know that I'm going faster than a beginner would be able to crochet at this point for sure. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue working those single crochets into just that front loop all the way around. So our piece will look like this. I just have a couple more stitches left to do here. So there's the last two single crochets through that front loop. And we've made it around to where we started. Then we are going to just be, you know, continue working in a spiral. We're not going to do a join here. You don't even need to know what that is yet. Um, so we're just going to insert our hook into the top of that first stitch we did and make a single crochet into the top of it. And this is how we continue working in the round. This is called an unjoined round. So we're just going to continue working two more rounds of these single crochets. And at this point, when you work into that very first stitch, put a stitch marker into that first stitch because that'll help you keep track of your rounds. So you're going to do the first round where we connected it, and then you're going to do two more additional rounds. And your piece will look like this, except, of course, we just switched colors. And now we actually have the real chocolate color, but a different mug color going on here. So this is what it would look like. So there's the one where we joined our new color. We did two more rounds. And now we are all the way up to round number four on the mug. And we are going to work that round underneath the back loop only. So remember, here's the two loops. We're going to place our hook underneath just that back loop and work those single crochets underneath the back loop. One stitch into each stitch around like this. And the reason we're doing this is because we are going to be creating this very squared off edge here at the top of our mug. You can see. Um, so that's going to help it fold in the, just the right places. So we're going to continue working single crochets all the way around. And we're going to do that for two rounds. Okay, so this is just the first round. Let me show you what it looks like here when we've got the second round done. So you'll be able to see two sets of ridges from those unused loops, from those front loops. That should be visible here. And you can see this is cupping into like a little bit of a bowl shape. This was the right side of my fabric as I made the hot chocolate part. This is the side that we saw. And now this is the, the right side, even though it's on the inside of this fabric because we are going to be folding this piece like this as we continue working on it. So you'll see the right side here, the right side here, and the right side here. So we're just going to let this um, be kind of cupped and have the right side as we're constructing it be on the inside. Normally when you are making amigurumi, your piece would be more like when we worked on the marshmallow. It would be like this, okay? So you, when you're crocheting, the crochet is towards you. That's the right side of your fabric. But this time, we're just letting it be like this. And you know, it doesn't really matter. You can always flip it the other way as you get a little further along. Okay, so after we worked round four and round five, those were both worked just through the back loop, one stitch into each stitch around. Then we're gonna continue by just making single crochets into each stitch around for a while. So this is gonna create the sides of the mug. Put that um, stitch marker back in there and continue working just underneath both loops this time. We're done with that, um, working it under just the back loop. So we're going to continue working around until, let's see, let's see, um, until we've worked through rounds six and seven. Okay, so four and five, 
are the ones worked into the back loops. So this is four, this is five, this would be round number six. So we do one more, we finish this round, and then we do one more round, one more additional round. After that, our piece will look like this. Okay, oh, Margaret's saying green is matcha tea. I know, that's what I was thinking of. That is making me want a boba right now. Maybe that's going to be my next project. Okay, so we did um, uh, rounds four and five. You can still see the leftover loops. And then we did six and seven, just single crochet into each stitch around. And now we're going to fold this to the outside. And there are pictures in your pattern that show you how to do this in case you're forgetting and, and you need a little refresher or if you need to see it up close or you need some, some arrows. But basically we just folded that fabric to the outside of our piece. Here you can see, it's folded just like that so the wrong sides are touching each other. And now we're gonna um, continue single crocheting around but this round is kind of special because we are attaching this um, set of loops to the ones behind that we did not use in the chocolate. So here, let me show you in this one because it's a little bit more obvious. Um, so when we worked this first round of the cup color, we left those back loops open. See, now I can put my little needle under there. Those are the loops that we're going to be working under as well as the loops in the working round. So what I mean by that, um, and I would say, just to be on the safe side, take this yarn tail and weave it back and forth a couple of times, um, like I showed you how to weave in things, and that will stay nice and, um, you know, it's not going to undo. Um, but I'm just going to tuck it in there for the sake of time. So we're going to be working underneath both loops, just like we have been, but then we're going to place our hook underneath the unused loop from that chocolate right there. And then we're going to yarn over pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two. So that's going to connect these pieces together. We don't have to sew it. We're just going to crochet them together. So we're going through the, the um, fabric that we just worked up, that edge, and now we're going to go underneath that like unused loop from that last round of the chocolate that we made. Pull up a loop, just like that. So this is going to connect, connect our pieces together. It's going to make it nice and sturdy. Um, it's going to allow us to stuff the inside of the mug and the chocolate is not going to be pushed up and out of the mug. It's going to hold, hold itself in place. And it's going to look really good. All right. So we would just continue working all the way around, connecting all these um, layers together. Here, I'll do just a few more and then I'll show you what this is really doing here. So you can see we've got another ridge here. This is our round of single crochet, but these two are completely connected. They can't undo from each other. They're basically like sewn together. That's what it looks like over here, and this, I can't take this apart. Okay, so you're gonna continue just stitching all the way around till you've used up all of those loops from the chocolate, and you'll be at the beginning of your round. And then when you get to the beginning of your round, you're gonna make a number of rounds. Let me just check and see how many that is. Let's see here. Um, up through round number 16, and it'll look like this. Okay, so here we have inside, the outside with the little edge. And then we are going to start doing decreases on round number 17 of the mug. <clears throat> so we're going to single crochet into the, each of the next two stitches, then we're going to invisible decrease, and then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch, and then invisible decrease, and we're going to repeat that section six times. Here, let me show you. These are the instructions. So single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So one and two. I'm going to place my stitch marker in the first of those two. An invisible decrease, you might remember, we're going to go underneath the front loop of the next stitch, and you can go underneath just the front loop, or you can go underneath both loops of the following stitch. That's up to you. You might want to try it both ways to see what you like. And then you're going to complete your single crochet as normal. And you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do another invisible decrease. Here's our invisible decrease. 
And now we're going to repeat that. So one, two, decrease, one, and then a decrease. One, two, and then a decrease, one, and then a decrease. One, two, decrease. One, and a decrease. One, two, decrease. One, decrease. So a decrease is just when you're taking two stitches and turning it into one stitch and there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, the instructions for the invisible decrease or the instructions for a single crochet two together, they're both in your, in your pattern. Oops, now I lost track of where I'm at. Let's see. One, decrease. Okay. One, two, one. Decrease. Okay, now I'm going to have to count my stitches because I'm not sure. <laughs> I lost track of what I was doing here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Okay, I just have one more decrease to do. So I think somewhere I messed up, but that's okay. I have the right amount of stitches at the end of my round. I'm gonna keep going so that I can make sure to um, give you guys the rest of the information. Okay, so on the next round, we're going to just do a single crochet through the back loop around, one stitch into each stitch around here. And this is gonna form the bottom surface of the cup. And after we do this, we're gonna place the eyes. One. Looks like we've got lots more comments. <laughs> oh, see, Wolfpack is telling me I'm making a homemade, homemade lavender marshmallows with it. Yeah, exactly. Not crazy purple marshmallows. That sounds very good. And, okay. Do you embroider the noses and the mouths after they're all done? Yes. So we're gonna embroider the mouth after they're done. There are no noses really on these little guys. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that when we're finished, basically. That and then a little bit of blush. All right. And then we still have the handle left to do as well here. Okay, there we are. There's our round of going through that back loop and that helps kind of make the bottom of the cup be a little bit more flat. Then we're going to put the eight millimeter safety eyes. Those are the biggest ones we got in our pack. We're gonna put them between the sixth and seventh rounds counting from the top of the mug. Okay, so these are not round six and seven of the pattern. It's counting from the top of the mug. So um, I'm looking at my little unevenness over here. That's from working a spiral. I'm gonna just put that to the side and make sure it's not right in the front of my mug. And then I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So between rounds six, wait, let me see. Sixth and seventh rounds, okay. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then how many, let's see, there's five holes between. So one, two, three, four, five holes that we can see. So that's what that's gonna look like. And then we're gonna place those backings on. And these actually are a little bit harder to pop on, but still not too bad. There we go. So there's our eyes, and then we can um, continue. And we can start stuffing really at any point. I usually wait until the hole is small enough that it can kind of hold a lot of my stuffing in there. Um, so I'm gonna continue. So we're gonna do an invisible decrease and a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So, whoops, our invisible decrease, we go underneath that front loop, underneath the front loop or underneath both loops. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. There's our invisible decrease. And then we're gonna do three single crochets. One, two, three. And then another invisible decrease here. One, two, three. Another invisible decrease. One, two, three, invisible decrease, one, two, three. So we're just continuing that all the way around, making the bottom of our mug come in a little bit smaller here. And after this round, I am going to stuff it. One, two, three. Invisible decrease. And one, two, and three. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this. And um, you can just make elongate that loop a little. You can put a stitch marker in. Um, I'm just going to kind of be careful I don't pull that loop out while I'm doing this. And when you're stuffing something, you want to make sure that you're like distributing the stuffing evenly in there and kind of mixing it around. You don't want big clumps in there. You want to kind of mix it up as you go. You don't want to stuff it so much that the chocolate is going to start bulging out and that the bottom is going to be really rounded. You want to make sure it has a little bit of room to actually be flat if that makes sense. Later, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, we're gonna tack the bottom to the top. That's that little technique that where we did that on the marshmallow to keep it nice and flat. Okay, so the next round, which is round 20, we're gonna single crochet into the next two stitches and then make an invisible decrease. So one, two, decrease. One, to decrease one two decrease one two decrease One, two, decrease. And we should be just about to the end here. I think we've got one more um, repeat here. One, two, decrease. There we go. Okay, so then on the next round, we're gonna do an invisible decrease and then a single crochet, and we're gonna do that six times. So invisible decrease, 
And if you feel like you need to stuff a little more at this point, you can. There's a single crochet. Now we're going to do a decrease. and then a single crochet, and then a decrease. And then a single crochet, decrease. So one thing about amigurumi is that, um, I wanted to mention this, it's good to take little breaks for your hands, especially if you have, you know, if you, you if your hands get tired or they cramp up or anything while you're crocheting, because you're crocheting at a really tight gauge, um, it can be hard on your hands sometimes. For me, it's okay, but um, I know that a lot of people have, you know, have issues with, with their hands starting to hurt after a while. So do, do take breaks if you're noticing that your hands are getting really tired. You know, listen to yourself. <laughs> okay, so we've got 12 stitches left. We're going to fasten off at this point. And I'm going to use a metal needle just to make it a little easier, but you can definitely do this with your plastic needle. I'm going to just pull that through, and then we're going to run that through all of the fronts, front loops here. And we're going to pull that closed at the bottom. And it looks like we might be running out of time for a little bit of the detail. So um, I wanted to point out, I made a TikTok for the cra Craftsy TikTok. Um, it's called the Real Craftsy Official <laughs> on TikTok. And I made one on how to put the blush on. I think I'm going to have to refer to you guys to watch that because I think we're going to run out of time um, before I get to that today. So I've run through all the front loop of each and I'm going to pull that in and that makes the bottom nice and flat. Then you can do the same thing as we did for the marshmallow and push your needle through and it's got a little further to go this time. And this might seem like, oh, isn't that a bad idea? Isn't she using yellow yarn? <laughs> but you can just pop it through. Let's see, where are you? There it is. Okay, so I'm pushing my needle up through here. This is just an extra little stitch to keep it from kind of billowing out at the top. Like if you put that much stuffing in, it kind of wants to be rounded. So I came out here and now I'm gonna go underneath the back of one of these chocolate stitches. So I don't want a strand going on the top. I'm just catching the underside. I can just feel it with my needle. And then I'm gonna go back down through um, the stuffing in the cup and come out the bottom. And I would do this probably a couple times if you can and just make sure, you know, you don't see that yellow stitch at all. You don't want to see that, but that helps keep the chocolate nice and flat in there. And then go ahead and weave in your ends. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is how to make the handle. And then um, we'll talk about the embroidery really quickly. All right, so to make the handle, we're going to be crocheting back and forth in turn rows. So we're going to start out by making a slip knot and putting it on our hook. So we've already done this before. I showed you guys how to do that earlier. And then you're going to chain 13 stitches. So one, you're just wrapping it around your hook. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then we are going to start working into the bottom of our chain. So we're going to roll our chain over from where all those V's are, roll it over. And then we're going to place it underneath that back bump. So we're skipping the first one, which is right here. We're going to place it right here and do a single crochet right there. And we're going to work across all of these back bumps. So we'll have a total of 12 stitches because we skipped that first stitch that was closest to the hook when we started doing this. So we're working our 12 single crochet across. And oftentimes people learn how to work back and forth in turn rows before they learn how to work in the round. Most, most people that I know um, learned how to work in the round later. But really I feel like it's just six of one, half dozen the other, of the other. When you, when you work back and forth in turn rows, you have to think about turning chains and keeping the edges of the, your rows neat and tidy. And sometimes that can be frustrating for beginners. So sometimes just working in the round straight off the bat is a little easier for people. But this project gives you a little glimpse into both worlds. 
All right, so we finished our last stitch. Then we're going to chain one. So we just wrap the yarn over and draw that through. And then we're going to turn this like we're turning a page in a book. We're just turning it over this way. And then we're going to work across those stitches in that direction. So we're skipping that turning chain. And we're going to work underneath that first stitch, making single crochets all the way across. We're just going to work those into each stitch across. This is row number two. And then we'll get to the end, make a turning chain, and work back and forth two more times. So you have a total of four rows, just like this. It'll look like this. Um, and there's extra help on the Creative Crochet Corner website if you need a little bit of extra help. And let's see. Take a small stitch. OK, we already did that. I'm just going to see how I have you connect this. OK. All right, so after you've got your little piece, you're going to sew these two edges together with a whip stitch. Oops, we're just going to fasten this off like this. And then we're going to sew our pieces together. We're just kind of curl it up into a little bit of a tube here. And it already kind of wants to curl. So just bring those edges close to each other. And then you're going to make a whip stitch by sliding your needle underneath one stitch from each edge. So underneath this stitch and underneath this stitch. And I'm going underneath both loops of each stitch. You don't have to, um, but I think this makes a nice and sturdy um, seam here. And I think that that just kind of helps it be a little bit more round if you go underneath both of those um, edges. All right. Okay, and then once we get this stitched up, we will add this to the side of our mug. So um, if you have quilting pins, if you're already a sewer or a quilter, you can use pins to attach it to your mug. If you do not have pins, you can certainly just use your stitch markers that came in your kit to attach it where you want to attach it before you sew it, sew it on. So that way you can kind of just take a look at it. All right, so you would go ahead and just pin it on the side like this. You can use your stitch markers to kind of grab a little bit of each fabric. So grab a little bit of the mug, a little bit of the handle, and then a little bit of the mug again. And if you were using pins, you'd do the same thing. You're kind of go, going in and out. It's almost like you're sewing your edges together when you pin things. And then you would do the same thing at the bottom. And then you would just go ahead and make a little whip stitch to stitch your pieces together. I'm, I'm just about out of time here, so I'm just going to kind of talk you through the rest of it. Um, so you're just going to take some little stitches on the edge of your mug, um, sorry, on the edge of the handle. You're going to go all the way around stitching through the, the, going through a stitch in the mug and then going through a stitch in the handle. And this is the part that I think a lot of people kind of dread when they're working on amigurumi is sewing the pieces together. But just take your time. Um, and, you know, if you get things pinned in the right place and you do, um, you know, secure stitches, you can always go around more than once, then it's going to look just fine. So you'd continue doing that. Um, and then in order to make that cute little mouth, all it is is you just have a little strand of the chocolate color and you come through the back. Here, let me just do this really quickly here. We're going to come through the back of our work, and you can go ahead and weave this in. You can weave it into your chocolate if you want. Let, actually, let's go through our chocolate, so that, that might make it a little easier for you to um, weave in your ends without it showing. But you can come through really anywhere on the mug. Um, and then you'll weave in your ends later, but you're going to come through, and you're going to make your stitch so that it's going to be just like a long stitch and you're going to come out right between the eyes okay so this this is like there's one little hole there and i came out the next hole and then there's one hole here and i'm going to go in this hole 
see how there's a hole between the eye and where I'm coming in and going out? Then I'm gonna make a little tiny stitch right here. Just like that, you're gonna pull it and then you can go back down through here and come out of your, at, um, in the chocolate right here. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends. And isn't that so cute? Okay. I'm sorry, we were kind of running out of time on that. I hope I answered enough of your questions. You guys had a lot of insight and a lot of um, comments, so please go ahead and read through those if you haven't been. Oh, looks like, and see, see Pack is recommending compression gloves. That helps her with her arthritis. What I was saying before about how amigurumi can kind of be, um, you know, because you're crocheting at such a dense gauge, it can kind of hurt your hands a little more, so that's a really great re recommendation from Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. All right, I have really enjoyed this project. I hope that you guys make these and post pictures on social media. We love to see what you guys are up to. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And like I said before, if you wanna see how I did the blush, then check out Craftsy's TikTok. Um, there's a video on that so you can see how I do it. Okay, thank you so much. Bye everybody.